the future of this tech is really exciting. Yeah. And, you know, in a year, I'm going to have to redo this episode because there's going to be more tech. Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. Two quick things to mention before we get started. First off, we apologize for the uh, sound quality issues in this episode. Second off, uh, the information that is shared in this episode is for informational purposes only. Um, This is either from Kathleen and I's personal experience with these technologies or um, information that we found on the company's website um, and their published articles. None of the statements are from the companies themselves, um, other than what we found on their websites. Um, and none of the promotion of products in this episode was uh, paid in any way. Um, it is really important that if you are interested in using any of these technologies, that you do your own research as well. Um, if you are needing help finding information or where to uh, do your own research, please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to um, show you where to get started. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Charting Toward Intimacy. I'm here with Kathleen. Hello. And we are talking about tech. You guys have reached out to me so many times to talk about tech. Um, And I was hesitant too, because I didn't really know that much about these technologies. And now We've done our research. Um, mm-hmm. I have used some of these technologies, so I can speak to personal experience. Um, I probably will be actually after doing some research. I'm like, wow, actually, I need to check out some of these technologies. So I probably will be checking out some of these technologies in the future too. Um, so we might do a follow up episode, like in a couple of months or something, um, of like personal experience using them. Um, but yeah, so let's let's dive in. Um, so I want to, I want to start with temp drop. Yeah. I use that one. I do too. I use temp drop too. I love temp drop. So I think there's a couple of things to say about temp drop. One, um, temp drop itself is not a method. Uh, temp drop does have a, oh, well, let's explain what temp drop is. Yeah. (laughs) There you go. What's temp drop? So temp Temp drop drop is, (laughs) temp drop is a wearable thermometer. Um, that you wear on your upper arm and it um, takes your skin temperature. So it takes like hundreds of readings of skin temperature over the course of the night. And then it also has two motion sensors in it. And so it then has this algorithm to kind of recognize like high motion, like get rid of those temperatures because those are going to be higher temperatures and like figuring out the point that you are sleeping the deepest and then taking those temperature readings, um, and, and calculating your basal body temperature. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. It's really, really cool. Um, and so temp drop can be used with a symptothermal method, um, or any method that like you want to include temperature readings with, Mm -hmm. um, But I think something that's really important to know. So what I was diving into right before is temp drop is not a method in and of itself. Um, Temp drop has a premium app, but they don't, um, as far as the research that I could find, they don't promote that they are a trying to avoid technology from their, from their own app and predictions. They say, look, you can use this technology with other things to try to avoid pregnancy. Right. Um, But they like, you can't just sign up for their app and they'll like calculate with the right amount of accuracy that you need the like fertile window and like when you should try to avoid and when you should try uh, when you have available days. Like they, so I'm, I'm saying this as like, in opposition to things like natural cycles and Daisy that promote that they do tell you this is a green day, this is a red day, like all of these kind of things. Temp drop will tell you those things, but they don't promote that with accuracy. You can use it to try to avoid. So anyway, yeah. All that to say, like temp drop is something that you can add to a method. Um, but it's also important to note that while temp drop is highly researched, 
Um, if you use TempDrop instead of an oral, vaginal, or rectal basal body temperature reading, you are putting yourself into the typical use category, not perfect use. Using TempDrop with a symptothermal method um, or any other method that has like temperature as part of its um, research. Temp drop is not perfect use of that method because there isn't research of using temp drop with that method. Right. Now, if you're yeah. comfortable with it, if, if you're willing to recognize that there isn't that research, um, then I highly recommend it. I freaking love the temp drop. Yeah. And honestly, it's really good. Temp drop. One of the reasons people go to it most, I think is when they're um, when they have babies that are getting up a lot during the night, yeah. So the idea is with your with your basal body temperature, you should be taking it same time every morning before you even get out of bed. But when you are up and down for you know handling the baby or or other children or whatever it is um, that's getting you up and down, um, that that temperature is not as accurate. So thankfully, that's why TempDrop has created the algorithm so that it can sense that high motion. And then mm-hmm. say, okay, those are not accurate temperatures. Let's use these temperatures instead. Um, that's the best. That's the thing I love. I love the most about it. And I agree. Then, um, you do have to use the app to, but it, you use the app like to kind of sync um, the temperature and to get that data into your phone. But if you, for anyone who uses uh, Read Your Body, which I think we can all agree is kind of like the best uh, yeah. <laughs> fertility <laughs> tracking app out there. Um, <laughs> That you can just um, use, read your body. You just touch sync temp drop um, or whatever it is. I haven't used it in a while because, you know, I've been pregnant, but um, <laughs> not anymore, but I was. Um, but anyway, it's like sync temp drop temps or whatever it is. And it just automatically pulls right into read your body. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to manually do it. You just touch the button and it syncs it all together. And I actually, like, if I ever have clients that do choose to use temp drop and, and the thing is like, when I'm talking to clients, I, I do like, make sure that they know that like, this is an option that you can choose. This is technically not what my method like, um, teaches. Yeah. But if you are willing to use this and this is something that you want, like that's completely fine. This is your choice. This is your fertility, all of that kind of thing. I personally, as an individual, highly recommend this device and use it myself with great accuracy. You know, that's kind of what I say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, and so when I do recommend temp drop, I always say you, you've got to chart with read your body. If you're going to use temp drop, like you can't do paper chart with temp drop. And here's why temp drop will retroactively change temperatures. Yeah. Um, if it, if based on its algorithm and based on like recognizing different, um, sleep patterns and movement patterns and things like that. So, um, it is really important to keep an eye on those changing temperatures. And when you use read your body and you like sync it to temp drop, you literally like press a button and it like pulls the temperatures. It will pull the new temperatures too, from the previous days that change. Mm -hmm. And so it's just important that like when, um, so again, if you're using temp drop, you're probably using a symptothermal method. <laughs> so yes. when you're trying to fulfill the, you know, main symptothermal rule to, um, uh, confirm ovulation, um, you have to kind of keep an eye on those changing temperatures because you might kind of assume, okay, yeah, this third day, that's going to be my like temperature. That's all I need. But then temperatures might have shifted a little bit. So you just kind of have to keep an eye on those changing temperatures. I haven't ever had a problem. Um, with like the changing temperatures and they're not changing by a half a degree or something. They're changing by 0.05 or 0.1. Like they're not, they're not changing in a monumental way that would change when your, you know, symptothermal rule would be fulfilled more or less, but it is important to like recognize like Cause like, if you get into the, the details of the symptothermal rule, like the third temperature needs to be at or above a certain level. And so it's possible that that level might change slightly or that, that, you know, that's yeah. what you kind of have to see yeah. and like recognize and stuff like that. But I think, yeah, moral of the story with temp drop is that it's not a method in and of itself. It no. is a tool to be used with a symptothermal method. Yep. 
Yep. Okay. Um, next- Anything else on temp job? No, I don't think so. I think Except that we love it. All. Yeah, and- we do, I do. Yeah, I love it. And honestly, um, I think for the rest of this this episode, whatever questions come up, we should probably put a cue box up on a Instagram. Yes, yeah. I definitely, yeah. I definitely mm-hmm. will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe after this episode, look for a cue box. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, y'all, if you want to buy Temp Drop, you're welcome to use my 10% off discount code which will be in the show notes you know perfect because i have one of those because temp drop gives them to everyone (laughs) it's awesome but hey you know what 10 10 percent off that's like nothing to shy away from right not at all um but but again don't just buy temp drop and say oh this is my method like right yeah work with an instructor and what i would suggest is work with an instructor who like knows and understands temp drop so either an instructor who has done their own research or who uses it themselves or something like that because like there are, you know, there's some particularities to temp drop and things like that, that yeah. you might want to work with. Oh, and I think one more thing to mention on temp drop, and then we'll move on is that a lot of people for three to five cycles will do temp drop and oral temperature readings just to confirm that temp drop is in fact giving them, um, you know, the, the reliable data that is like matching the oral temperature reading. And yeah, typically what comes out of that is that people see a much clearer, like smoother pattern from temp drop. And they're like, Oh, this is why. Cause that's what I did at first. I yeah. used it for one month. I did both readings and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is dumb. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna use temp drop. <laughs> But see, I was willing, really I was willing to take that little bit of risk. You know, I, you know, right. I was willing, willing to do that, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that to say temp drop is great. It's great. Okay. So now we're going to talk about natural cycles and Daisy. Mm. These are similar. Um, they are similar. I want to talk about their similarities first, I think. Well, I mean, yeah, there's not that much different actually. Yeah, actually, I have this whole comparison chart I'm going to pull up. You do, yeah. While we talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, natural cycles and Daisy are both um, apps that have done their own research and will calculate for you fertile and infertile days and tell you this is a green day, this is a red day. Right. One very important thing to mention with these apps is that they um neither of them follow like catholic values so what they'll suggest on red days is using barrier methods so just recognize that <laughs> yes um yeah maybe just uh don't listen to them just don't they- don't <laughs> listen to that advice. don't listen to them when they don't suggest- yeah <laughs> uh, um so yeah so i was uh, you know i remember when natural cycles came out and you know everyone in the fertility awareness world was like all up in arms. Like, wait a minute. It's like, this is fine. Like being advertised as like a first, you know, time ever something like this has been out there. And it's like, we've been doing this stuff for, for a long yeah, time. Sorry. Now, right? Guess what guys? Like <laughs> endothermal method was like in the, the first FDA fifties or something like, was when right. like billings, the billings method was like back in the fifties, symptothermal was like a, maybe a decade after that. Like exactly. It was like the first birth control of its kind. And it's like, no, it's actually no, it's sorry. Not. It's not. <laughs> We've been doing this for a while, but it is unique in that. Right. So it's another algorithm based. And I was kind of wondering because it, um, it has its thermometer, right? Which is more so like a typical, just regular basal body thermometer. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it's like important it to manually... note that the natural cycles thermometer, there is nothing different. Nothing different. You than, can... than a regular basal body thermometer. Yes. Um, but it's not like Wi-Fi enabled or anything like the, um, like the temp drop where it automatically uploads with the push of a button. This temp drop is Bluetooth enabled, not Wi-Fi. Sorry. Sorry. That's what I meant. Bluetooth. Wow millennial (laughs) bad millennial um but yeah so you have to manually enter your temperature with natural cycles and I was like how is this going to work to kind of confirm or or to to predict your ovulatory phase when it's using temperature which right we know temperature detects the progesterone rise post ovulation right so how Mm -hmm. is this going to help um to 
to kind of predict when you will ovulate so that you're not using, so you have those red days, right? Like before ovulation. Um, but turns out it uses a very conservative rule in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as you take your temperature and it confirms your temperature rise and all of that, um, the algorithm will start to uh, pick up on that. And then it will change to become a little less conservative in phase one based on how you progress cycle by cycle. And the yeah. Based on, up. yeah. Based on your cycle length. Yeah. 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 Um, so the rules, the rules that it's using. So at first, um, and I haven't personally used natural cycles, but this is what I understand as like how they use it. So first they use um, zero available days until your um, ovulation is confirmed by mm-hmm. a temperature only rule which is temperature only is a highly effective way to confirm ovulation. So post temperature rise, um, natural cycles is spot on that, um, you are infertile. Like that, that is, that is highly accurate. Um, then what they'll do based on your pace past cycle length, they will use a uh, borderline rule. Um, typically this is like a six, five, zero day rule. Um, so six days, if your um, cycle, if your shortest past cycle is 26 days or longer, five days, if your shortest past cycle is 23 to 25 days, zero days, if it's shorter than 23 days. Um, so it slowly will put you into that six day category. Um, because it wants to get a couple of cycles to make sure, unless you give it past cycle history, um, which you can't, you can give it past cycle history. So, Um, and I think it's really important to note that that is actually a highly effective rule. Um, Simto pro and CCLI use that rule for the first four to six cycles for every couple that goes through their programs. Um, Marquette uses that rule. If you are using a monitor only method, um, that is a highly effective rule. Um, then what natural cycles will do is, um, after it gets data from at least 12 cycles, it will use a during rule, um, which essentially takes your, um, your low temperatures prior to the high temperatures. And it calculates like which of those was like the, so which six of those were the earliest and then it will like give you available days until that earliest of the six last lows so that could potentially give you an extra day or two um and that's after like 12 cycles and again the doring rule is a highly effective method the doring rule is used by symptom pro ccli and boston cross check so basically what i'm trying to say is i i am actually changing my tune slightly yeah. on natural cycles Um, I don't recommend it baseline. I recommend learning a method of fertility awareness from a certified instructor because you can ask questions and because you really get to know your body. That's what I was just going to say is that, you know, natural cycles might be effective in regards to achieving or avoiding pregnancy, but it's not giving you the intimate knowledge of what your biomarkers are indicating, Mm -hmm. what they're telling you about your hormones, right? Like it's not giving you an overall view of your health. Um, so, I mean, I guess maybe, maybe you're not interested in knowing your health. Maybe you're only interested in avoiding pregnancy and maybe it'll work for you. But I always recommend every woman get to know those intimate details about her body and track it and know what it means. Um, because our reproductive health is a sign of our overall health. So Um, Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's, this is why I have changed my tune a little bit because I do a ton of marriage prep stuff. Um, and I meet one-on-one with at this point, hundreds of marriage prep couples, um, which is amazing. I love chatting with marriage prep couples one-on-one and I have run into a number of them that aren't, they have no interest at this point in, in learning about their cycle. They just don't. They want something that is easy, but they recognize, okay, yeah, the birth control pill isn't a morally illicit means of avoiding pregnancy. And so they're willing to, you know, abstain and and use a natural method, but they don't want to put in the time 
to figure it out. They don't have the mental capacity for that. They're getting married in two weeks. They need something that's going to tell them green light, red light. Right. And so for those couples, I think natural cycles is actually a pretty good first step. Yeah. And I think it is highly effective. It is. And yeah, I think it was what, like a 93% typical. Yeah. Typical use. Perfect use. Yep. Um, so that is pretty good. That's like, I mean, up there with a lot of other, um, actual methods. Um, but I think you're right. Like it can be a really good introductory step where after using it for a while, they could be like, Hmm, you know what? I'm kind of wondering like, you know, what all this really means, you know, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. let me, um, let me dig into this deeper and maybe actually learn a method now, you know, once they kind of get over the overwhelm of like this, because it's a cultural mind shift, right? Yeah, it is. Being able to put your fertility into the hands of an app and not have to like take a medication to, to do something about it. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's a big shift for a lot of people. And like, it's a big trust fall really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe once, yeah, they use this, they see, oh, wow, this is actually kind of working. This makes a lot of sense. Now I'm more interested in knowing like what all of these, how this all works. Yeah. You know, and then you can, can I just say of- though that natural cycles adds up. It is a hundred dollars a year. Yeah. It that's does. a lot of money. Like, like I know, but um, yeah. So, I mean, that's important to note too, is like when, when people are kind of comparing like natural cycles to um, learning a method, like you know, if the method is going to cost three or $400 to learn the entire method. Yeah. Like, yeah. As long as like that, it actually ends up being less expensive in the long run to learn a method than use natural cycles. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, um, so switching over to Daisy quick. Yeah. So Daisy is, I mean, basically, um, almost it's very similar to very similar in that it will it'll tell you green day red day it's using very similar rules um does have their own thermometer that does automatically sync to the phone i guess so it's yeah like you know a manual entry i what i don't know what i don't understand about daisy is how they have a 99.4 percent effectiveness rate it's just to... it's just their studies right so like their yeah, their true. study just they just happen to get a slightly higher right. efficacy rate right like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, I, I was like that's because that's a very that is not <laughs> it's not statistically significant the right. difference that they have um in their perfect use so yeah so i that's just um, that's why I, I typically say because like the effectiveness ratings for the modern methods of fertility awareness um, are anywhere from, or in perfect use, are anywhere from like 98 to 99.9% effective. That difference is not statistically significant. So they are all like right. equally effective, if, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. So so anyway, yeah. So Daisy's going to do the same thing. It's going to use the same rules. It's going to take your basal body temperature. It's going to give you red light, green light. Um, the I think the biggest difference with Daisy is that um, Daisy is like an upfront cost, but I don't think th- I couldn't find information about like an ongoing cost. Right. So it's like, I think it's like 300 something dollars for their thermometer. Right. Um, and that's it. And you know, what I was looking into too, which, which I, again, I want to research, but, um, Daisy has like little online courses that you can take to like, learn about your fertility. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm very interested to that. And natural cycles has one too like a little, you know, little course with, with, um, modules and things like that. So I'm interested in looking into those, um, just to kind of see like what they tell you, because again, I think, I think this is an interesting first step for some people. And I'm, I'm talking about the type of person who literally is like the birth controls, poster child, birth control pills, poster child, right. Wants to take a pill and have it take care of everything for them, right? Right. This is what these apps do. You take your temperature, same as you would take the pill, and it takes care of it for you, um, which is a very interesting mindset shift. And I see a lot of similarities. Now, I'm not saying yeah. that these are the same because there's a difference between a certified instructor teaching you and an app. But there are some interesting similarities to monitor only protocol with the Marquette method. 
Yeah. In that the monitor like houses the um the data, right? Uh, I I've heard a lot of people who like switched over to Marquette that they really liked that, you know, they had this piece of technology that just kind of said green light, red light for them, you know, right. um, with yeah. specific rules and things like that. So you can't just use, we're going to get to the clear blue monitor in a little bit. So <laughs> we won't skip ahead yet. Um, but so, so that is interesting that um, there are some similarities there. And, um, and it's just, I, I, I think it is important to note that like, these are highly effective methods yeah. um, and they're, and so long as you are not using a barrier method, they are completely morally licit means of avoiding pregnancy. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. move on to, um, to things that won't work by themselves, <laughs> by themselves, things that won't yeah. work by themselves or won't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> for avoiding pregnancy. Sorry for avoiding pregnancy. Okay. All right. This one, I have gotten so many people who have asked me about this piece of technology ever since a certain fruit company announced this. I have gotten oh my- so many DMs so and funny. like, and like texts and yeah. oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Apple watch, mm. Apple watch series eight. Yeah. Okay, so the Apple Watch Series Eight um, takes your temperature, and um, and they announced, oh, hey, we can predict uh, ovulation with temperature. All right, so here's the details. Um, and I just realized we have been taking a lot of time talking about technology, and we should probably start wrapping it up. So <laughs> let's move through Apple Watch quickly. All right, so the um, what the Apple Watch is doing. Um, I did this research. This is literally in their information. Um, the normal health app, the health, the Apple health app has been doing this for years now, um, Mm -hmm. has cycle tracking. You can put in your info, you can put in your period, things like that. You can enter other data too. You can, you can enter cervical mucus. Um, it will give you a, um, you can enter in ovulation test results too. Um, it will give you a fertile window prediction. Um, now this is a sentence from support.apple.com. The fertile window prediction is based on a traditional calendar method. The fertile window is calculated by subtracting 13 days from the estimated next start cycle start date. Okay. Um, so it is using a calendar method to predict ovulation. Now, what the Apple Watch Series 8 is doing is it is doing a retroactive ovulation estimate or retrospective, sorry. So after it confirms um, the biphasic shift, um, which is the temperature rise, which is the temperature rise. This is is a funny sentence from uh, the help article. Advanced algorithms use wrist temperature data and logged cycle data to estimate the day ovulation likely occurred. Um, so basically what it's saying is we're going to take the temperature that was right before you had three to four high temperatures, and that's going to be your predicted ovulation day. That is retrospective. Um, also, this is new data that Apple is, or new waters that Apple is starting to tread into. Please do not use the skin temperature from your Apple Watch as your basal body temperature. They do not have enough data on this. They are estimating nothing that what they are saying is like, they are not saying anything conclusively. So please do not use this temperature for a symptothermal method. In fact, it even says at the very bottom of the apple.com, things you should know. Number one, cycle tracking should not be used as a form of birth control. Number two, data from cycle tracking should not be used to diagnose a health condition. Mm-hmm. But what's really funny is that like, if you're actually taught how to do things, how to do things properly, you can use them for both of those things. Cycle tracking can be used for both those things, just not Apple cycle yeah, tracking. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway. So yeah, I think that's that that's honestly all we really have to say about that is that it's um it's new technology, but I think one of the coolest things about the fact that Apple is doing this and that they're like making a big deal out of it is they are shining a light 
mm-hmm. on the world of fertility awareness, yeah. which is incredible. Incredible. Yes. Agreed. Okay. All right. Next piece of technology. So now we're going to move on to fertility monitors. Um, so we'll speak really briefly about clear blue, um, because we've talked about clear blue in other, um, episodes, the clear blue fertility monitor is a device out of the box that is used for trying to achieve pregnancy. The Marquette method and Marquette university have done incredible research in order to figure out ways to use the data that the clear blue fertility monitor gives you in order to avoid pregnancy. Do not use the clear blue monitor on your own to try to avoid pregnancy. That does not have very high efficacy. And I've heard many stories of people who are like, I used a low day and then I got pregnant. Well, guess what? You weren't using it according to the protocols that that the Marquette method has for avoiding pregnancy. So if you are interested in using a monitor to avoid pregnancy, you must must have a Marquette instructor and you will be using the clear blue monitor. Yeah. Um, Okay. That's the clear blue monitor. Um, no, actually, uh, sorry. So really quick on, on how the clear blue monitor works. It gives you a couple of days per cycle that you're going to test a window of maybe 10 to 15 days, depending on the length of your cycle. You're not going to test until day six of your cycle. Um, you're going to test during a testing window. So you're going to select a testing window that you want to. You need to use highly concentrated urine. Um, so ideally, you're going to test first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Um, and what are we testing for with the clear blue monitor? Ellen? We are testing for estrogen and luteinizing hormone. Um okay. The clear blue monitor does not give you values of those things. It gives you low, high, or peak. High means that it detected a estrogen high. Peak means that it detected a luteinizing hormone spike. Um, The clear blue monitor will read high regardless of the values. If it catches a high, it will read high until it gets a luteinizing hormone peak. So you could have months of highs if you don't reset your monitor. And again, this is why you need to work with an instructor because they have figured out ways to kind of mitigate these issues. Um, The other thing to note is that the clear blue monitor will read peak or after. So it'll, if it gets a peak, which is a spike in luteinizing hormone, it will read peak. And then the next ones will always, regardless of what the values are, be peak high, low, low. So it'll always read peak, peak, high, low, low. Yep. Like always. Well, and you're not considered. I mean, there are, there's like, there's like very few circumstances where it won't read that way. Um, yeah. But it'll always give you like two peak days, regardless of what the second like value is. Yes. And you're not considered to be, you know, infertile until after your second low day. Correct. Yeah. Peak, yes. peak, high, low, low. Yeah. yeah. Um, But again, don't use the monitor without help from an instructor, like without learning the method. Yeah. Um, Yeah. The clear blue monitor has like drawbacks. Like you can't test on any day of your cycle. Um, You have to test in the window. It doesn't give you the values. It has these like automatic read days, right? Um, Which is frustrating to me. Yeah. Um, and now comes in a couple of other fertility monitors. Now, I think it's important to note that I believe Marquette is doing some research on both of the ones that we're going to mention next. Um, okay. So Mira, mm-hmm. Mira monitor, the monitor that literally that. everybody is like, wow, this is incredible. Um, yeah. Okay. So the Mira monitor is marketed for trying to conceive um, only. So again, don't use this one out of the box. Well, don't use this one at all. You're trying to avoid pregnancy because right. there's, there isn't any method that utilizes this monitor. Um, I believe that Marquette is doing research on this monitor though. Um, so this monitor um, allows you to test every day of the cycle. Um, the test sticks, as far as I could tell, the test sticks test for luteinizing hormone, estrogen, and progesterone. Um, and, and FSH. Oh, and FSH and FSH. That's fun. Yeah. Um, Mira will, Mira will do two things. 
it will give you a fertility score, which is dumb. It's crap. Throw it out. That's what I've been told. Um, <laughs> the fertility score is like retroactive. Like they like give you a score, but then a couple of days later, they'll like change the score and be like, oh, that was oh. actually your 10 day. Um, so anyway, that's just crap information. Throw it out. Yeah. Um, the really good information, but you have to go to like a different spot in the app for it is the values it gives you. It gives you actual values that wow, it is reading that. of your, you know, estrogen levels, your luteinizing hormone levels, your, um, progesterone, et cetera. Um, so I could see mon- I could see Mira actually being used in the future for yeah. trying to avoid, we well, just don't have the research the- yet for it. Yeah. One of the things that, um, they even say on their site is that they're really great for people with PCOS because of those values. Mm -hmm. Um, They've helped a lot of people with PCOS achieve really healthy pregnancies. So that um, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, that could be a game changer for um, people with certain health issues like that. Um, Right. Or like, if you're concerned that you have like low progesterone, um, you could like actually get your (laughs) progesterone tested. Yeah, Um, exactly. Or like see what your values are. Um, so that would that would be kind of cool. Um, or you could see if it's like dropping off faster. So that's really like interesting. An, they even say it here. It's like an at-home lab, which it is. So yeah. Like having those values, that's amazing. Yeah. So um, Mira is, is very similar to Anito. Um, Anito is a newer monitor. Um, it is one only, I have not even heard of. Yeah. It is only usable on an iPhone. Um, it actually uses the iPhone camera to read the test sticks. It's really interesting. Um, and so right now with Anito, um, you can, yeah, you can test your like fertility hormones. Yes. Um, but in the future, Anito is going to be able to do glucose readings, like all the, I was looking at like the things that they're trying to build out right now. Um, and oh no, I lost it. (laughs) I lost the page where it was. Okay. Um, thyroid, um, testing, like infections, like they're literally trying to be an at-home lab, which is really cool. Um, but again, Anito is only for trying to conceive women. Um, it's there, you know, there's no research done right now on trying to avoid, but because it gives you actual values and has a lot more flexibility in when and how many times you test, I could absolutely see this being uh, utilized to try to avoid after some research has been done. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Dido's expensive. Yeah. Their test sticks are like $3 a piece, more than $3 a piece. Wow. That yeah. Is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So that, that would add up. That would definitely add up. Um, okay. And then Ava, Ava fertility tracker watch thing. So Ava, Ava's cool too. Again, only trying to conceive women, but it tracks um, basal body temperature. It tracks your sleep rate. It tracks your breath rate. It tracks your resting heart rate. Um, and all of those things actually change uh, with your with your cycle. So your resting heart rate changes, like those do change. And so again, I could see these things. I could see Ava being used to try to avoid in another yeah. decade or so when we have research, if anybody does the research on them. Um, yeah. But right now there isn't any research. Don't use it to try to avoid. Um, but it's fascinating. It, it is really, really cool. So yeah, Ava, you just wear on your wrist. Um, it's just, it'll give you, it'll give you that data of like, I, I believe it's like sleep rate, resting heart rate, um, your skin temperature, temperature and and your breath rate. Um, I'll tell you, it's really cool to be um, sort of like witnessing this point of all of this new technology sort of coming out and, you know, frustrating that we can't trust it all 100% yet, but, and, you know, we're kind of still learning, but really cool at the same time to kind of see where this is going to go. Like when our grandkids, right? Like could possibly be using this stuff and how they've developed and changed over the years. I don't know. I find it like fascinating. I, I do too. I think it's incredible. And like, yeah. I, I think the future of fertility awareness is really exciting. And like the secular world is starting to get really excited about it too. Yeah, exactly. And so, so cool. Yeah. And so like, we're going to see more things. We're going to see more accurate things. Um, yeah 
than, you know, what we have on the market right now, which is Daisy and natural cycles. Those are the, those are the two on the market to try to avoid pregnancy. Yeah. Um, but, but I think, you know, Ava is doing research there. Ava is doing their own research right now. Anito is doing their own research right now. And Mira is doing their own research right now. Yeah. Um, Clear Blue's not, they don't care. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're like, ah, it's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Um, crazy. I mean, Clear Blue's been around forever. Like they are the original monitor, right? They're just kind of, they're just sitting on there. Uh-huh. They're sitting on their throne. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think that's such a good, good thing to mention as we wrap up this super long episode, um, is that the future of this tech is really exciting. Yeah. And, you know, in a year I'm going to have to redo this episode because there's going to be more tech out there. Very true. Yeah. Like, and so, yeah. So if you're listening to this episode and it is not 2022 or early 2023, like look for a new one. Soon. Look for a new one because, <laughs> <laughs> because oh this God. stuff is this stuff is awesome. And yeah, like Anito is new. It came to the market not that long ago. Um, you know, and and I think I think we'll see new stuff and new research in the next um, you know, even in just the next year, we'll see new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. All right. Well, that yeah. is that is try one for for our tech episode. Um, yeah. If you have questions, we're going to um, head over to Instagram. I'm going to have cue boxes up like all week. Um, if you're listening to this episode in real time um, for more questions for either for future episodes, or if I can answer questions there, because um, I know you guys have a ton of questions about tech yeah. and yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, if you are not following us on Instagram, be sure to uh, check us out, head over there with questions um, or reach out to me via email or DM me on Instagram. Love hearing from you guys. Love answering your questions. Um, Until next time. See you guys.